Hello everyone, my name is Melissa, and if you're interested in cross-stitch, quilting, and taking time to be creative, then you're in the right spot. Today I have a floss tube update to share with you, and I'll be sharing, I think I have six finishes, some works in progress, a little bit of haul, and then I want to talk a little bit about um, how I'm doing Whip Go this year, and also how I'm tracking my stitching time and what projects I'm working on. So welcome everyone, whether you are a returning subscriber or you just stopped by to visit today. Um, I'm so happy that you're here to share a little stitchy time with me. And um, the first project that I have to share that I finished is Sunflower Seeds by Stitching with the Housewives. And I've, um, I think I've purchased about three of these seed packet um, patterns and I'm really happy to have this one finished. So when in the last video, I think I mentioned that I just had some black stitches here in the gingham part to finish. And when I got to looking at it and getting it pinned onto this board, I realized that in one of the leaves here that I had left out um, some white stitches. And I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm so glad that I saw that before I went on to fully finish it. So anyway, this was just a fun, small project and I'm looking forward to doing the strawberries and I think I have the daisies. So I'd like to do them all, but those are the first three that I'll, that I'll start with. So I'm not quite sure how I will finish it yet. I'll probably, you know, look through the hashtag on Instagram and um, see, I'm thinking something pretty simple, maybe around just a wooden block. So, anyway, that's the first finish. The second finish that I have is, um, it's a kit, and I've had it, you know, around for quite a little while. I think I picked it up at, I don't know, maybe Joann's or Michael's or something like that. Um, but it's, let's see, what's it called? Love You to the Moon and Back. And I stitched this for my daughter. So let's see. So I think it's just on a kind of a 14 count Ada. It was a pretty quick stitch. I think I did it in a day or two. I was, um, it was, I think the day after the procedure I had on my heel. So I was having to sit still and um, I didn't have really much to do except stitch. So I was able to knock it out pretty quick. And I'm not going to finish it in this little plastic um, frame that it came with. I'm not exactly sure what I'll um, finish it on, but I am thinking, um, Something like, let's see, I've been collecting some little things I found at the dollar spot. And so I've got this that I could fill, you know, cover that up and fill it in. Um, I also have some like little tags. Now this has ho, ho, ho on it, but you know, it doesn't have to, you know, I can cover that up. So just, I've been collecting some things here and there and um, stashing them in a, these little, these little bins for, you know, a quick and easy finish. So I wanted to show you, <laughs> I love tea and we usually drink some decaf tea in the evenings. And um, I had been drinking Candy Cane Lane and I just thought the, the box was so pretty and I just cut the lid off and punched some holes and kind of put some labels on there and was able to keep track of the threads for um, for this little stitch and so I just thought this was quick and easy to do for a project that you know I wouldn't have ongoing for a long time so I didn't really need floss drops or um, you know, to bobinate or anything like that. I just needed something to organize these pretty quick. So that, that turned out pretty, pretty quick and easy. I do know that, um, 
Chantel 141 Design Company, I think is her name. Um, she has an Etsy shop with really cool finishing um, pro products. Um, they're wooden. But anyway, I think she has a tutorial on her uh, channel that's floss drops that are made from different boxes and um, where she punches them out and you know has like more regular floss drops, which is such a great idea. So anyway, if, if you're interested in using materials that you have around the house to kind of keep you organized, that's a great way to, that's a great way to do it. And this is my cute little project bag for this, um, for this project. My daughter made it. She took a class um, at the college here in the summer that they had for youth on like duct tape projects. Everything they made was with duct tape. And it was so neat. They took, I think like a Ziploc bag and um, covered it in duct tape. She put a drawing on it with some clear, covered it with clear tape. And I've had, I've used this for all kinds of things. Um, and here's the little, the little plastic frame, but I think I'll, I think I'll spruce it up just a little bit. So that is finish number two. Um, the next thing I have is a Primrose Cottage Stitches Jolly Happy Soul. And this project I was stitching with um, my former local quilt shop um, in Kansas. They have a Facebook group where they do stitch alongs and quilt alongs. And it was before Christmas and I was like, oh, that's, I love Primrose Stitches patterns. They're usually all in color. Um, I'll show you just like a little boop. <laughs> that makes it really easy to follow. And anyway, they had it broken up, I think over a month. So I got the stitching on it and it was so, I really enjoyed stitching this one. Um, and it was fun to stitch along with some other people in the Facebook group because um, some people changed the fabric and some people changed the threads they were using. I think we had a choice between Classic Color Works and DMC and um, I stitched mine in DMC. And then, um, but it, it was just neat seeing how people were approaching their stitching and sharing quite a bit. It was a pretty active group. Um, so yeah, I stitched this on 14 count Ada and let's see it is in beautiful beige so that's the first time I've stitched on that color but the white stands out really nice on it um I did want to mention on on sunflower seeds I did change one of the colors I forgot to mention that but the green, when I first stitched it, the green did not stand out. It was a darker green. It was, let's see. I used DMC for it and it called for 935, but it was just a little dark. And so I switched it out for 937. It was a little brighter. I thought it was a little easier to see. So I just thought I'd mention that. Okay, so that, oh, and I'll have to tell you, so um, with Jolly Happy Soul, at the end, if you posted a picture of your uh, finished piece, it didn't have to be fully finished, then your name went in for a drawing, and I think they picked like two or three winners to get like a little, a little prize pack. So when I get to my haul section, I'll show you what I won. It was so fun to like, to win something. So anyway. Um, next is Stitchography by, um, Fat Quarter Shop. It was a, was it free? I don't think it was free, but I think it was a Fat Quarter Shop exclusive for World Cross Stitch Day in 2021. So uh, it's, it's not a very expensive one, I know. And it uses Cosmo threads. So I, I'm pretty sure I bought a floss pack um, with all the threads in it at the time. And here is my finished piece. I really enjoyed the colors on this one. 
quite a bit. I need to cut down my board. <laughs> But this is so fun because it has all of those fun cross stitch words and I just loved getting to the end of a end of a word and changing colors and and it was fun to stitch on it took me a while but I'm not a fast stitcher and it was fun to go back to every time and it was easy because the it was 14 count Ada and I felt like I could pick it up. I took it with me, like when my daughter had art class about an hour away in Durango. Um, you know, I would take it with me and be able to stitch in the car. So that was pretty fun. So let's see, that one is on 14 count Ada with Cosmo threads. So the other one that I have is also from Fat Quarter Shop. And this one was a mystery stitch along. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that this one was a free pattern. Um, but you'd be able to find it, you know, on their on their website. But it was a mystery stitch along, and normally, I know I've said this before, normally I'm not a mystery person, especially with a quilt, uh, especially with the cross stitch projects, because I really want to, <laughs> I want to see what I'm going to be stitching or quilting or sewing, if it's going to take a lot of time. With quilting, it takes a lot of materials. I just want to know what I'm getting myself into. But with this one, I think I saw the first... I think the first um, pieces they shared were maybe the little candy and the ribbon and I was like oh that's pretty cute so I decided I'd give it a shot no I don't I can't remember I don't think I kept up with it but um, I think that I got it done pretty quickly so um, here is my finished piece I really enjoyed this one too there's, uh, I've said this before that, you know, I love having a motif to stitch and then moving to the next one. And I don't know, it gives me like a little sense of accomplishment, a little thrill. So anyway, I have a sick kiddo at home today. Um, she's been sick all week and has a pretty bad cough. And so I hope that, hope that that's not coming through on this, but, um, I don't usually film when I have anybody at home, but I wanted to I wanted to have a chance to visit with you guys today. So um, before I started filming, I took her back a snack and a drink, and she's been pretty wiped out. I think the coughing is, uh, you know, making her tired. So she's relaxing in her room and um, and hanging in there slowly and surely. Every day she's gotten a little bit better. So anyway, um, let's hope that. It, I just hope that I don't catch it because <laughs> the coughing, gosh, you just feel so bad. Feel so bad for those little kiddos when they're, um, when they're coughing like that. It just wears them out. So she's not that little. She's 17 now. She had a birthday recently. So, um, you know, <laughs> she's pretty fun. Okay, so that was all of my finishes. Oh, except I have a neat little sewing finish that I want to show you because it's cross stitch related. Now, a lot of you probably watch Bumble Stitches, and if you don't watch, I think her name is Nicola. If you don't watch her, you should. Um, she is a lot of fun to watch, and a while back, she shared that she'd picked up a tray that um, she had found at a low cost store and made like a little stitchy, Oh, a little, a little tray for her stitching things. And so I thought, oh, that's such a great idea to be able to corral your things and, you know, have it sitting next to you on the sofa or, you know, it's easy to move around. So I found this little tray in the Target dollar spot. Um, let's see. I don't know how much it was. My guess is it was probably like $5. And they have things like this periodically. Um, but I thought it would be just, you know, the ni a nice small little size to carry around with me. I usually have it sitting right here on, this is kind of my sewing room, and I have a couple of Ikea desks like this, and um, usually have it sitting right here. And then, but I like to stitch in the evenings um, on the sofa while we watch TV as a family, and I can take it there, and a lot of times I'll stitch, um, 
at our dining room table. I don't know why I like to stitch there sometimes. Um, but anyway, I just took this along with me. So in it, I have, um, I'll show you some of the things I have. My, my daughter made this. It's one of those little ironing dot things. What do they call them? Perler beads. And she's made me quite a few of those. And I use that to kind of set my coffee cup on. And I, I need readers, so I usually have some readers. A little Mill Hill needle threader. Um, these scissors I got for Christmas um, from my husband and daughter. And they are amazing. Like, I usually have these little scissors that are... Um, do I have a bear? Oh, yeah. They're just like three or four dollars at the checkout stand at a quilt shop. And they're fine, but I had no idea how fantastic these would be. They are so sharp and um, they just cut so clean. They have sharp, a sharp little point there. So if you need to like pick some stitches very carefully, you can. Um, they are OmniGrid and I'm sure that <laughs> I'm sure they got them at Fat Quarter Shop. So they got me a mug, a really pretty mug, and um, and these scissors from Fat Quarter Shop. So okay, let me just take a second to tell the story. So my husband always wants a list. For as long as we've been married, he'll always ask for a list. And <laughs> he never gets me anything on the list. And so, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago, maybe 10, we've been married a while. Um, I said, you make me come up with a list every year and you never get me anything on my list. Why do you make me give you a list? And he goes, well, I, I wanna surprise you. And I'm like, then don't ask me for a list. <laughs> so anyway, I've been giving him a list and he's been pretty good about trying to get at least one thing off of my list that I want. Like, it doesn't matter if he, you know, gets me something off my list or not, but like, why are you asking me for it if you're not gonna use it? So anyway, this year I told him, I was like, Fat Quarter Shot has a wish list function. And so I've been going through and making sure that I get a, you know, a big wish list of things, of cross-stitch patterns and notions. And there was a mug on there that was really pretty that I wanted and um, all kinds of things. And, you know, you just click it on a little heart. And I had a ton of pages of things. So there really would be a surprise if you pick something. But at least you know he would know that it would, you know, be something that I would like. Because we don't have um, a local needle workshop anywhere nearby. Um, and so I told him, you know, just go and you and my daughter can, like, go through and pick out something that you like and that, or that she likes and surprise me. So he went to go pull that list up and somehow he clicked on something. So it added every single thing for my list. And I think I have like 20 pages <laughs> of items. And he was like, oh no. So when he tried to delete those things from the list, somehow he accidentally deleted everything. <laughs> off my wish list and I was like mm -hmm. you you were just trying to get rid of my wish list so I wouldn't have so many options of things to pick out and buy <laughs> but no he just he he immediately came to me he was like oh my gosh I messed up <laughs> it was so funny I was like it's okay it's easy enough to add things back to the list so the other thing I did was my sister-in-law um it was her like we take turns um, with the siblings getting each other gifts for Christmas. We don't draw names, but we kind of have a rotation. And um, we all like to support, um, you know, family-owned businesses and small businesses. And so I was able to give her um, uh, the idea of getting a gift card or a gift certificate from my local um, needle workshop in Lawrence where I used to live. So that was kind of nice because they just mailed that out to me and um, I'll be able to pick things out. So anyway, that was uh, that was my Christmas wish list. So sorry, that kind of took me completely off track, but <laughs> these scissors by OmniGrid are fantastic. So I also have like a little um, a needle minder up in the corner 
And this, I picked up this idea from Jenny Stitching Simply, I think is her name. She has a floss tube. And she's on Instagram. And I think she had watched Jean Farish's floss tube videos, which I've watched some of hers too. Um, but she has like a little sponge with water and um, keeps it in a little container. And so when you pull your, um, at least when I pull my thread off of my thread drop, sometimes it like curls up. And so, and it's so dry here. I don't know if you can tell, but my hair is like really staticky um, here in New Mexico. Um, so I run it over the sponge and it kind of straightens it out really easily and uh, makes it quite a bit easier to work with. And then um, I had some time I'd bought tea in a little tea tin, probably at Christmas time or something. I'm going to use this for my Oort container and just open it up while I'm, when I'm working. So I'll show you the little mat that I made. I use my needle minder on here. Oh, and I've got my cross stitch key tucked under there from Fat Quarter Shop. And I put it underneath because um, I don't use it that often, just when I start something new. So I took a mini charm pack of sugar pie. And what designer is that? Layla Boutique from Moda. And I just stitched those mini charms together and then laid it in the top of the, um, the tray to kind of see, I kind of centered it. And then I took a, another piece of fabric and ran it through my bias tape maker and just kind of slid it over the edge and then was able to, I wasn't trying to be too particular like I would with a quilt um, because I knew this was just a quick and easy thing but um, I just did like a little zigzag zigzag stitch on the top and I thought with a wide enough zigzag that it would catch it would catch the back and it did it does have a little bit of you know it's not how do I say that it doesn't go perfectly over the binding into the little quilted part um, perfectly on the back you know in some places you know there's a little there's a little edge but for what the purpose of this was I thought it was quick and easy and I'd like to do a few more just to be able to change it out you know seasonally or just change it up a little bit so I thought they were they were fun springy fabrics and I didn't make it in the springtime but it was very cheery so just a little mini charm pack and I'm sure I had pieces that were left over that I put in my scraps. So anyway, that's been really, really handy. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to share with you are whips that I've been working on. And I did, did want to mention, I forgot one whip that um, in my whip parade in the last video, there was one other one because I had only taken a few stitches on it and I'd, I'd set it in a different spot but it was um, Strawberry Summer by Al, to Al, Al Forest um, and I forgot to show that last time but you'll see it when I pull it out to stitch on again probably this spring so okay so I've had this one going you know forever and it is the Woodland Sampler by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And I have gotten all the way up to, I think in my whip parade, I was working on the owl. Well, I finished the owl. And there's a cute little guy. He's got some little acorns and leaves. And of course, Somewhere along the way, I have like scooted things over. This got a little close to the edge. I think it was about one stitch off, but we're just gonna keep moving forward. I had to, I'm really want to be very careful about my borders and how far I needed to go down in case I was way off on something. And so I stitched the border um, 
for November. And I don't know if you can see here, I mentioned in my whip parade that I learned from Nicole Spore how to do the half stitches and then when you get to 10, do a full stitch, then do you know nine more half stitches and then a full stitch. So I was able to really count and keep track really easily with that. So I'm gonna try and use that a lot more on some borders that I'm doing for some other projects. So um, November's next. And as much as I wanna get this done, I think, I think I'm ready to work on some other things. Maybe I'll get back to it this month. I'm not sure, but um, I'm gonna put it aside for a little bit and stitch on some other things. And then this one I don't have a pattern cover for, but it was a mystery stitch along, which I know I don't normally do mystery stitch alongs, but when hands-on design, <laughs> I took a chance with um, the Christmas one, the cookie bake. So I had, to, I had to do the costume party. So when you last saw this um, during my whip parade, I think I had started this middle um, green plume coming out of the cauldron. And so I've stitched the rest of those. I've stitched these little orange dots up here, the bats, the skull, the book, and the pumpkin. I got one of these leaves are supposed to be down just a little bit, but I'm not ripping it out. <laughs> so um, I still have some back stitching to do, still need to do this shelf. And then I think I'll be done with part two. So it still has some other things. I think it has like a banner that says, I think happy Halloween or maybe just Halloween. It's got some other things in the background that are in part three. So, um, but this was one of my whip go goals for this month. And so it was kind of fun to pull that out, but I've met my goal so far and I'll tell you more about my whip go goals here in a little bit. Oh, and that project is I'm gonna throw them all down and pick them back up, it looks like. <laughs> um, this is 32 count linen um, by Hand -dyed, Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie, and it's in Silver Mist, and the threads are DMCs. So, and then the last one is Stronger Together 2021. And um, I'm stitching this on the call for Aqua, Aqua Dyed Effects by Fabric Flare, 14 count Ada. And I'm using DMCs, and I have to see what the top is. Okay, yep, right up there. I always say I mark this. Maybe I didn't. Sometimes I take a little micron pen and put like a tiny little T at the top for top. Um, but that's... What I've been working on, you know, sometimes at night, this is just a really easy one to pull out since it's light fabric, it's 14 count. And um, last night I sat down and I stitched, I thought I was gonna start on the stars, but I decided to do these little squares um, to make up some of the gingham. It's got some dark pinks and some light pinks. So this one has been really fun to stitch on. It's been hard to hard to put it down once I start in the evening. Okay, so those are the things I've been stitching on lately, or at least since my whip parade. Let's see if I have any other things to share with you. I think that's it. And then, okay, so I was gonna talk a little bit about whip go. So I was a, a little afraid to do whip go. Part of me was like, oh, that sounds like a fun, great idea. And then part of me was like, okay, you know, if you tell yourself that you have to stitch, you know, something, you're going to not want to do it. So I was trying to figure out a way to kind of get around that. <laughs> um, so what I did was I went to the Facebook group um, and if you're not familiar with Whip Go, I remember when I first started watching flip, uh, floss tube videos, I was like, what is Whip Go? But Whip Go was started by um, 
a woman that has a YouTube channel called Jesse Marie Does Stuff. Or Jesse Marie Makes Stuff. I think it's Jesse, Jesse Marie Does Stuff. I'll link it below <laughs> to her video that explains about Whipco. Um, and there's a Facebook group. And what you do, um, you can go to the Facebook group if you want and print out like a blank Whipco template, which is what I did. And I just decided to set all of my goals to five hours. And um, so for my categories, I wanted to pick something that was kind of general so that, um, and whip related, so that I could choose each month what the project was. So for January, well, let me just tell you what my little categories are. So um, I have Christmas, holiday, and it could be any holiday, hands-on design, seasonal, ornament, Lori Holt, words, a lonely whip, one that I haven't touched in a really long time, uh, stitching with housewives, animal, flowers, freebie, I have a free space there, a mini or small, Mill Hill, Frosted Pumpkin, my Shine On Sampler, Ornament, a Big Whip, my Oldest Whip, Alicia Paulson, Jingle Ball, Mill Hill, a New Designer, and Liz Matthews. Um, so I tried to do a mix of, um, you know, types of project like seasonal or holiday, um, and then different designers that I know I have. So, in January, um, our, let's see, she picked six and 10. So six was Lori Holt and I chose the vintage Christmas sampler. And I showed you in the last video that um, I got kind of stuck when I cut them apart. And some of you commented some really great ideas for me to consider on finishing those and I appreciate it so much thank you that's really got my the wheels in my brain turning a little bit on um, on how to do that so thank you for taking the time to comment and write those suggestions down um, so I didn't accomplish that one but the other one the other number that was drawn um, so she draws two numbers every month and um, the other one was animal on my board. So I was like, okay, I need to pick a, I always go to my whips first to see if I have something there that has an animal in it. And I chose uh, my woodland sampler because I'm trying to move it forward, right? So um, that was the owl. And then in February, she chose um, seven and 11. So seven was words, and my Woodland Sampler has the, the words of the month um, on there. So while I was tempted to pick <laughs> something new that had words on it or something else, I was like, okay, let me choose this one again because I'm not finished with that October block, and let's keep moving it forward. So I was able to finish, um, finish that block, which was, um, which was nice. Well, I didn't finish it in February, but I moved it forward so I would be able to. So I accomplished that one. And then number 11 um, was flowers. So I really kind of wanted to start. I have Lori Holt's, um, it's some kind of flower sampler. And I really wanted to start that one. But I was like, okay, this is whip go. This is to move your whips forward, finish your whips. So. I looked to see what I had, and um, I had started sunflower seeds that I showed you today um, in September for like sunflower September. And so I was like, oh, well, let's get that one move forward. So I did five hours on that one. So that worked out really well. So March um, is 22. So 22 for me was the jingle ball category. So I could work on anything that was um, that I had purchased at the jingle ball. Well, I hadn't started anything from that from then. So I get to pick one of my jingle ball purchases. Um, and so that is gonna be, um, I'll show you when I show you my haul, but it's um, 
Jolly by Hands On Design, and I haven't started it yet. And then the other number was number two, which was the costume party that I showed you. And um, I got my five hours in on that and actually went a little bit further than that. So that's how I'm doing um, with Go this year. I was a little hesitant, but I was like, oh, I'll just give it a shot. And this is really nice because it gives me a framework and it gives me choice, which I like, and um, it has it has a nice variety. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. I think three months is pretty good, and um, we'll just keep seeing how the rest of the year pans out for that. So um, the other thing I wanted to show you was how I'm keeping track of my stitching time. I know a lot of people have um, the Book of Days, and I think there's a particular person that creates that. I'm not sure who it is, but I know quite a few um, quilt shops will order the Book of Days. Um, but at the time, I wasn't exactly sure where to find it. And I don't know, I, I think it was in November. <laughs> I was like, okay, I need to get organized. I wanna start keeping track of when you know I'm stitching, how much time things are taking. What I ultimately what I would like to do is have a rust rough estimate of how long something takes me so that I can determine, you know, do I really have time to stitch this? I don't know if I'll ever get to that because I'm probably just gonna, you know, start stitching what I want to stitch. But um it has been useful so far. So I just picked up a a little monthly planner thing from um from Target in their like stationary calendar section, just a couple aisles down from their greeting cards. And um, I think, sh let's see if I can, Sugar Paper is the person who, um, you can see it there, makes this calendar. And they have, I've gotten these before. Um, here's, let me grab this one. This is kind of a thin one like that, that I got just for like my household kind of stuff. Um, and this is by Day Designer. So they carry a couple of different brands. Um, this one's kind of nice because it has like a plastic um, cover on it to make it a little more durable. So anyway, um, this is the one I got. And I'm actually gonna take this off. I saved it on there because I wanted you to be able to see like who the, the business was so it kind of looks like this and when I started this I wanted it was November and so I just printed off on my computer a November calendar and started writing things on it I added some fun little stickers I think I actually picked those up in the stationery aisle at Target and then I have December's Okay, I'm not sure where I got these stickers, but they're puffy when I thought, ooh, this would be fun. Well, texture inside your planner when you turn your page and you try to write, it, it's not so great. So, um, like in January, I wrote some little notes on my thoughts. I wrote my whip go goals. Um, and then every night that I write, or that I stitch, you know, I write it on there. And then I think if for January, the purple highlighted ones were um, my cross stitch, and the yellow ones were um, quilting that I was doing. I don't know that I will always um, do my quilting in here, but at the time, that's what I'm, for right now, that's what I'm doing. Um, I kind of wrote on the side, there's like all these notes, things that I wanted to start. Um, I didn't start any of those in that month, but it kind of focused my mind on those. And then in February, I, I did. So I was having a hard time finding stickers though. I know that there's been this, um, like an antique look sticker. I don't know if it's like bibliotech. I've seen a recommended sticker book that a lot of people are using in their calendars and um, I could have ordered that I guess on Amazon I don't have a bookstore here like you know Barnes & Noble that carries that so I was like you know went to G 
Joann's and different stores looking for stickers, Target that I might like. And I just wasn't finding, you know, finding what I wanted. And so what I realized was I have all of these cool can calendars. I spend a lot of time looking for really beautiful calendars to, calendars? I can't talk. Um, calendars to hang in my kitchen. Cause I just, if I need to like glance at the date or something. Um, so I really try to find some that have some beautiful artwork. And usually I can find them at um, Paper Source is a really good place. And we had one in Kansas City when I lived there. Um, but gosh, gorgeous is that. Um, but of course we don't have that here. So I've been able to pick some up online. But I don't know, one year I read, you have to really look early for calendars, like in October or something. You can't wait until December. So this one was um, the artist that did all of these is, let me see if I can find the cover, Katie Daisy. So it has all these beautiful images. So I decided, and I had a hard time throwing these calendars away. This one was from 2020. So they've been kind of under my desk, um, tucked away. I was like, you know, one of these days I'll do something with them because um, the paper source brand, the store brand of calendar on the back side, they usually have lines for you to cut out and reuse your calendar pieces. Okay, so this is um, the paper source brand. And on the back, they have like, you can cut out little gift boxes and bookmarks and tag things. So you can reuse these, there's a big gift gift box and you just cut out along the lines and use some glue anyway I thought that was very clever of how to reuse some of these things so I've been hanging on to these and that's a long-winded way of saying that if you can't find stickers that you really like reuse your calendars and I was able to cut out some images to put on on my little calendar tracker. So that is February's and I started out by just putting some in the corners and then as I kind of finished up the month and had some blank spaces I was able to you know tuck tuck some in but I love that little bee. Anyway that made me so happy to figure out a way to reuse um reuse those calendars and make my um make my calendar pretty. So, so far in March, I have, I, I picked a different page to cut out and I'll go back and kind of fill in some spaces as we go. So anyway, just little joys of, um, of life. So there's that. So I told you that I won a prize for the stitch along with um, Stitch On in Lawrence, Kansas. And they sent a little package and um, in a little bag here. And let's see what I have in here. So they sent this, a tail end weaver. And then I got this, I've seen Lenny from uh, the Sable Stitchers floss tube has been sharing that she's gotten some of these um, prairie schooler patterns and they're just tiny little minis and when I saw that in there I was so excited I was like oh I have one now <laughs> so it's pretty cute little Santa I've heard that you can get these um, on uh, one two three stitch um, for some reason, I thought maybe you couldn't buy them. I thought maybe they were like little freebies to give out, you know, that shops have for customers. I don't really know how it works, but um, I think somebody that I watched said that they got them from 123 Stitch, little groups of them. So I might have to take a look and see if I can find some more. And then I was really excited to see these because I love using floss drops. And I've made some of my own. I think I need to use a little bit thicker paper. Um, and But I just haven't had time to make some more. And I needed some more. But I've been holding off to use them until 
until I showed you guys. So these are Lori Holtz. Lori Holt designed these. And it's so Emma um, distributes them at Fat Quarter Shop. But stores can buy them for their their inventory, your brick and mortar stores. So they are very thick and sturdy. I think they're kind of a plastic material, um, which I've been kind of looking more towards, you know, finding um, like chipboard or cardboard. So I'm not using so much plastic, but um, I do know these will get used over and over and over and over. Um, so they're not one use and I think you can just use a label maker to put, you know, your color and, and all that on the back and they come in a pack of, how many are in here? I'm going to guess like 25 maybe. There's 20 in that package. So that'll be fun to try. I'm all excited. Um, and I know they've had these. I bought these from them before, but I caught, I got a couple of um, little tubes. You can store your needles in these, which is pretty handy. I've got some actually floating around in a drawer here, which is not a good idea. I need to figure out what size they are. Um, but I got a couple of these. And then I've got um, some threads by Weeks Dye Works. So... Um, let me grab a piece of paper here. Just gonna hold those up. Let's see, that'll do. This one is driftwood. It's kind of a khaki, khaki color. And then I've got a little green one here, which is called grasshopper. Nice green. And then a red. So I think they picked like Christmassy colors. This one is Garnet. These are all by Weeks Dye Works. You know, I've never stitched with, with these threads before. Now I've purchased um, some of them to kit up. Um, the Quaker Pumpkins by Hello from Ms. Liz Matthews. I'm not sure if that's the, um, the name of that. The official name of that but I call I in my head call it Quaker pumpkins but it calls for weeks so I've kitted something but I haven't actually stitched with these um, threads yet so I'm excited to try those and then I ordered some more needles and this looked really interesting it's called a um, stitch tracker by purple hobbies and you know, you can put this little blue thing on your on your paper and kind of focus in on the area that you're working on. Maybe put a motif or something like that so that your eye more easily goes to it. And then it's got this little backer with a magnet on it. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Um, and it says that the back is like a fidget spinner. That cracks me up. I think my, my hands are pretty busy when I'm stitching, but um, I thought I'd give it a try and see. You know, if I'm working on a bigger pattern, it'll help your eyes kind of zone in on the area that you need to go to. So I'll let you know how it works. So those I got from Stitch On in Lawrence. Then I went to the Jingle Ball, and I know lots of people have talked about the Jingle Ball and how much fun it was, and it was great. Um, it was, there was so much to do. Um, 10 thumbs up, like it was, it was so much fun. And I did, I did get some patterns and some little things. So hands-on design was there, and I picked up, um, I'll show you this one first because this is my one of my whip go things I'm going to work on um, this month. And it's Jolly and it was a little kit and it comes with, you've got your fabric in there and your ribbon. There's a little pom-pom for the top and um, the little orange for the nose. So I think that'll be a fun little quick stitch. Um, I think, let's see what that fabric is. My guess is it's a 32 count 
linen. And I bet it's I bet it's hand dyed. It says the model stitched on 28 count blue jeans gingham. And I'm not sure who that's by. But I'll make note of that when I start stitching it. So that's one of the things I ordered from Hands on Design during the Jingle Ball. And then I also ordered um, Oh Christmas 3. circle ornaments and I got the finishing kit to go with it which is basically the finishing directions in the circle so I don't have to cut out those circles which will be nice and then I got um, the thread pack I had to think I've got one other thing that I got from them but I got the thread pack for um, those Oh, Christmas three and th these are my first color and cotton um, threads so I'm really excited to try those too so it came with uh, bonfire and this one is bumblebee oh you can see a little bit of that variegation and then this one is emerald Oh, this one is a white one. Let's see. Let's do this one. Moonlight. And this one is a white one called Pearl White. And this one is Red Poppy. Some pretty colors. And then it came with a little, this little hang tag that's laminated. And this um, little guy is, I believe it is the exclusive ornament. Um, you were able to purchase, if you wanted, a, um, a booklet that had an ornament from each designer that was exclusive to the Jingle Ball. And I think this is hands-on designs. And so you can use these same threads for, for, for that, I believe. So anyway, fun, fun. So it'd be great to try those. Okay, so I got those. I'm gonna put those to the side so that I know I did that. Um, I'm gonna show you um, a couple of the other Jingle Ball things that I purchased. So I have been using, so let me tell you what I did. So I was very impatient and wanted instant gratification. You could have ordered a paper copy of that ornament book um, from the Jingle Ball, but I wanted it now. <laughs> and so I got the PDF download of it. So when I looked at it, um, it looked pretty, um, ink heavy. Like there was lots of colors, full page pictures. And I was like, Ooh, I don't really want to print that. And so, um, I used good notes and, um, if you follow the 911 Stitcher, she has a video that's a tutorial on how to use good notes. And I had used it a little bit while I was teaching last year um, to kind of keep track of attendance and things like that, assignments. And so I was like, oh, that's brilliant. And it is very easy when you're downloading things from your phone um, to download straight to good notes. And so that's what I did. Um, and so let's see. I have a file with um, some of the things that I got from the Jingle Ball. So this was one that I picked up. It was from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery and this is Coulter the Fox and I just fell in love with him and there was a pattern that you could purchase for Clementine and I think I got that one too. I think I think Clementine actually was the exclusive one in the, ah, oh, here she is. Yeah, so cute. I just love those little orange or clementine slices up in the corner. So she'll be fun to stitch. And then, I'm 
I'm not sure if this one was a freebie one or not, but um, there's one for the Jingle Ball to commemorate that event. And then I got um, from the Blue Flower, the Seasons of the Heart Winter. Try and zoom in so you can see, see that. I like that little quail. And the little fox. It's really fun. And then I got the ermine. I I don't know if this one in their stores, the designers had lots of things that you could get, you know, in on their website. Um and so some of these ex are exclusive and some are things that you can you can get now. So there was something about the colors in this one I, that I loved. I don't know really what an ermine is. I want to say it's probably something like a mink or a ferret. I'm not sure, but I thought it was cute. Okay, now this one um, is from Hands on Design. And I think it uses some of the same colors, maybe. No, there's some others because I see a lime in there, a lime color. Um, but it's called the Tree Lot. And this one was exclusive for the Jingle Ball. I think they might add on to these as time goes on. But um, I thought those were really pretty. Something really different that I haven't stitched anything quite in that shape before. And then I picked this one up from Lindy Stitches. I have never stitched a Lindy Stitches pattern before. Oh, now it's probably not going to stay. It's sideways. Wow. I'm going to hold it up and you can like turn your head. <laughs> um, but it's got all those little motifs and I love, you know, little motifs like that. And then um, it says peppermint candy, gingerbread spice, Christmas means everything nice. Okay. And I thought I put all of the Jingle Bell things in that file folder, but... I do not see something in there that I picked up, the Jingle Ball book. I did pick that up. Now the other thing that I wanted to show you is um, my sister got me some cross-stitch patterns from Etsy um, for my birthday. So the ones that my sister got for me, I started printing them out, but she got me so many that I had to, I was like, okay, I need to start printing and put them in good notes. So start remembering to use that functionality. Um, but here's the, here's one that I think that she would love. Um, our dad used to collect ball jars for us and for himself. And I don't know, I love that one with the flowers. So I thought that maybe I would stitch that one for her. And then she got this one, which I think is kind of cool that because you could break this one up and just use certain motifs that you want. Um, these are by Cross Stitch Foxy. Cross dash stitch dash foxy. Um, I think all of them are from no, they're not all from her. This one says VML Design Company. I don't know if you can see that. Mm, there we go. So they might not be all from the same designer. This one is Pumpkin Spice. And then I started downloading them onto my iPad. So this one is Hello Autumn. And that one is by the Cross Stitch Foxy. And then let's see. She got um, some gingerbread houses for me because I love gingerbread houses. So there's one and another one. There's one. And then some Christmas trees. I think I got three different Christmas trees. I don't think I'll show all of them to you, but there's a nice variety of Christmas trees and those are by that cross stitch Foxy. All right, so that is all of my haul, plenty. No, it's not. Okay, I lied. Project bag fabric. So I 
we have in in the town that I live in two local quilt shops and one I stop in every so often just to see if they have anything new in or just to kind of get out of the house a little bit and there's another one um, that I didn't know was even here for a long time and so I don't think I'd been in for a couple years um, and so I decided one day I'd stop in and they had this cute fabric by Kimberbell I think those mugs are just adorable and then this is a navy and then a stripe. So I thought I could do something with a project bag with those. Um, then, okay, next thing that I wanna share is what my plans are. So you know how it goes with, <laughs> with us stitchers. We make plans and then we choose other plans, but this, my whip go for um, March is um, the the little ornament um, called Jolly by Hands On Design. This one here. So I'm going to start this sometime soon. And then my other whip go is um, Holiday, and I chose the Costume Party my hands-on design and I've already done my five hours so I'm good on that one but if the mood strikes me I might since it's out I might stitch a little bit more on that but I have three of the seasons my hands-on design um I think I showed in my whip parade that I've been I have winter started and I went to go you know go through my whips to see if there was something I could stitch on the other day and I was like oh winter is lovely we had snow on the ground at the time um, we had a big big snowstorm not too long ago but I think I'm ready <laughs> I think I'm ready for spring um, so I decided you know I think I'm gonna start this and just the idea of stitching the raindrops and the little tulips I think the tulips will be my favorite um, maybe even the birds I think I'm ready for some spring stitching. So um, it sounds like it's a hands-on design month for me. So this will be my new start and it's called Let's Talk Spring. And I already have it kitted up um, from Fat Quarter Shop a while back. Ooh. <laughs> so I might have to cut that out. I may have shown the pattern. So. A while back, I bought the kit and it had the floss pack and um, the Witchell fabric. So it's, I'm pretty sure it's chalkboard black. Yes, chalkboard black, 14 count Ada. So that would be pretty easy to stitch on. And those are my plans. I did want to let you know that if you're looking for me on Instagram, that um, I go by, um, I have two Instagram accounts, and I go by Under the Evening Star for a lot of my quilting and just family um, adventure content. So you can check out, um, if you're interested in quilting, Under the Evening Star. And right now, you may, you know, if you follow along with the quilting um, things on Instagram, you might know that um, there's the Instagram Quilt Fest going on right now. And so people are posting daily on certain topics. And um, so that's been kind of fun to kind of follow and, you know, see how certain quilters answer some of the prompts. So you might take a look at that. Um, I've been posting daily this month to kind of um, get back in the habit of sharing on Instagram again. I haven't done that in a while. So if you are more interested in cross stitch, then you can follow me over on Evening Star Stitches. And so I post um, cross stitch projects over there. Um, I haven't posted like a ton, but I'm trying to get back into the habit of sharing on Instagram again. So anyway, you can follow me for quilting and cross stitch on those two accounts if you're looking for me there. All right, you guys have a great week and I hope you get lots of stitchy time in and I'll check back with, in, check back with you very soon.
Bye.